Hey everybody, back with another unboxing video. The Huawei Mate 10 Pro, I'm excited man. So I gotta be honest, I've already opened this box. But, um, not because I ha I wanted to, but because when Huawei gave it to me, they needed to show me something. So this is not a true unboxing. But I didn't peel off this part yet, so. So let's see what's in here. Okay, you have a SIM ejected too, and I believe this is a case. Okay, a bit disappointed because this case, it's a cheap plastic kind. Last year when I purchased the Mate 9 Pro, I got a hard shell case, like an actual pretty sturdy case that I would use. This cheap plastic case, no. These are the cases that you can buy in Shenzhen for like 6 RMB. A little bit of a disappointment right here. Okay, so, okay, pretty basic bare bones design. You have a USB-C cable right here. I do like that there's a purple trim on this USB cable. Yeah, there's a purple trim here too, that's pretty cool. And this is a China plug, AKA European plug. Actually no, this is probably a European plug, I'm, because this phone I have, I'm told, is not the Chinese version of the phone. So let's take a look at the device. I had a hands-on on this um, last week and I liked it a lot, and I'm glad Huawei gave me the black one. So let's do the peeling. Oh yeah. So I um, last week when I tested the phone, I had like a, a, a brown one, I mean, it's called Mocha Brown. And this black one looks a lot better. So let me power on the device. There is a plastic film that's over the screen, but I'm gonna leave it on. Um, I don't wanna take it off and actually scratch the phone. So. Okay, I'm back. So I got the chance to play with this phone like a few days before its official launch. But that was quite stressful because Huawei has so many rules. Like it, Huawei told me I couldn't bring the phone outside. I couldn't really show anybody. So that hands-on was quite limited. I was stuck inside the house. Like everything I did had to be in, inside the house or inside the building. So finally, I have a full review unit on me that I can actually take out onto the street. So uh, my early impressions from the phone remains the same. Although you see that right now I have Nova Launcher on this phone because, uh, sorry Huawei, I'm just not a fan of EMUI. I mean, I, I think it, EMUI is not terrible, but I just prefer Nova Launcher giving me options like a bunch of different options like swipe down to bring down notifications and I can have a stock Android feeling. So in fact, let me go back to uh, Huawei stock launcher really quick. Okay, so now I'm back on, this is EMUI 8.0, so uh, I'm not a fan of, first of all, no app drawer. When you swipe down from the middle, you bring up search, and I don't like that. So you have to pull down from the top to bring out notification shade, or um, luckily Huawei lets you put a button right here too, but I just prefer to have it be able to swipe down from the middle. And if you look at the EMUI icons, they're all kind of that square-ish iPhone icon lookalike, and I'm just not a fan, I like, I like, um, more colorful Google icons. So EMUI, it's fine, but I prefer stock. Not actually, no, I don't prefer stock. I prefer Nova Launcher, which is a bit more customizable than stock. So you, you might remember my hands on, I had like a mocha brown color. Wasn't a fan of that. So luckily my review unit, it's black or, or mostly it's kind of like a dark gray. I'm loving it a lot. It feels good in the hand. Although I miss the curved edges from the Mate 9 Pro. The Mate 9 Pro had that kind of Samsung Galaxy style curved edges. This one, it's it's a mostly flat panel. Slight chamfered edges right here, but not, um, otherwise the display is flat. So now one interesting thing, the Pro actually has a lower resolution display. This is a six inch AMOLED panel, but it's only 1080p resolution. 2160 by 1080 to be exact. Um, 
while the standard edition Mate 10 actually has a Quad HD resolution, but that's an LCD panel. So that's a very curious choice. Next time I see the people of Huawei, I'm definitely gonna have to ask them why. Because it's kind of odd that the Pro, which is the more expensive and the more premium version, has a lower resolution. But you know, you're not gonna notice anything, any pixels or anything, because the display still looks beautiful. So unfortunately, even though you can hide navigation buttons, as you can see on Instagram at least, after you hide a navigation button, it does not fill up the screen. So it stays at a 16 by 9 aspect ratio. It does not go in that longer aspect ratio that fills up the phone. Because you know me, I'm all about, if you have a bezel-less phone, you should take advantage. Well, not bezel-less phones, if you have a slim bezel-less phone, you should take advantage of it, right? So I don't like that there's this black bar right here below where this could be more videos, goofy ass Instagram videos. So even though I have a um, launcher on top, the phone is really fast. I think Kirin 970, I mean, I Kirin 965 or 960 was one of the fastest chipsets I used last year. And then 970 is definitely up there. Everything just zipped so far. Haven't really had any lag. There's six gigs of RAM, so plenty of memory. So you can, you know, you can jump to a different app and everything just loads instantaneously. And if I go back to Instagram, the video is still playing. You can jump back and forth between apps. So as mentioned earlier, and by now you already know this, um, if you even pay attention to smartphone news, the Huawei Mate 10, what's so special about this phone is that it has an MPU inside. And that means it has an AI inside the chipset and the AI is always actively working. So this camera can tell what it's looking at. So watch, I'm gonna pan over here and it knows immediately it's looking at text. It can tell the difference between a cat or a dog or when I point it at a person, it knows it's a person. It can tell it's food or even a drink. It's, it's really impressive how smart it is. But does that result in better photos? Because Huawei is saying that since the AI is so smart and knows what it's looking at, it produces better photos. And um, early testing photos are good, but I can't tell if they are like 100% like, I can't say 100% that it's like definitely better than photos produced on, on my LG V30 or the Samsung Galaxy Note 8. But I did a test, so I will have photo samples um, up for you soon. So just as a test, here's the um, Mate 10 Pro next to the LG V30 side by side. So they both have a six inch display. So you see that the LG V30 is a little bit smaller because it has slimmer bottom bezels. And I prefer the um, LG V30's form factor. It's it's cur it's a little bit more curved, so it feels a little better in the hand. But these are both very good looking phones. So one of the things I really like about Huawei phones, and Xiaomi lets you do the same thing, is that you you can go to a second space into your phone. What what it does is um Huawei and Xiaomi partition part of the storage into into a separate hard drive. So then that means you can unlock you can go into a different part of the phone. Let me, I'm not gonna show you the pin. So now you can go into a different part of the phone. It takes a little bit uh, while to load because it's loading a completely new hard drive. So now you see I am on another part of the phone. And this phone, all the apps are independent. So I can have a separate Facebook account from what's on my main phone or a, you know, Instagram account. And then, you know, that, that's, that's important because, uh, and everything in this part of the phone cannot be searched by the main phone. So this is important because a lot of people carry two phones. Some people carry, um, I see, I know a lot of friends that carry a phone for work and a phone for like personal use. So with a Mate 10 or, or a Xiaomi Mi Mix 2, you don't need to carry two devices because this phone can be your work or personal phone. Because when you're in, let's say this is my work phone mode right now, Everything in here is just work stuff. Like not all my personal photos, like selfies I took yesterday will not show up on here. And then when I switch back to the main mode, so now I'm gonna switch back. It's probably gonna take like, yeah, so now I'm switching back. Now when I switch back to the main phone, all the stuff on, on my work phone won't show up here. So that's the legit way to use this. There's also obviously a shady way to use it. If you're a dude, you know what I'm talking about. So you need to save your porn or save your, you know, pictures of girls you have to hide it from your girlfriend or your wife then you can store it on your other part of your phone because if you're in a relationship you know what i'm talking about your girl it's going to go through your phone so if you can store your photos and videos on the other part of the phone then they can look through here and they, they won't find anything so otherwise um this 
EM UI Apono has a couple of features that I like. I like that there's a one hand mode that's very easily to activate, not like the LG V30 version, which is kind of tough. And there's actually surprisingly a lot of gestures for a Huawei phone. So you can you can do the knuckle arch. Let me just find a smart assistance. So when you go into smart assistance, you see that there's motion control. So you stuff like flip the phone to mute, and you can bring it up to your ear and all that. And then also you can do systems navigation. You can bring up a navigation dock, which is that little floatable button that everybody does nowadays. But there's also, but right here, you see that you can draw a letter to open an, an, an application, but it doesn't work like on Meiju phones where, or OnePlus, where you draw a letter on the phone when it's sleeping. This one, you draw on the, on the phone when it's actually on, but you have to draw your knuckle. I'm not a fan of this, but um, some people might like it, so it's cool that it's here. So going back into the camera mode, you swipe from here, you see you have all these different modes, and, and to, as a matter of fact, some of them are kind of pointless, like you don't really need watermark and filter just brings up a bunch of different filters that I, I don't I don't think you needed like a like a whole menu dedicated to it you could have just have a filter button on the corner but some of the stuff are very useful light painting is very useful it can take some very cool um, shots with the light trail kind of like a slow ISO I mean slow shutter speed and then also night shot it's also it's badass night shot what it does is um you basically have to you have to use a tripod for night shot. The phone will be able to to take take maybe 20 seconds to capture a bunch of lighting and then produce a photo that's way brighter than in real life. It's a little bit artificial, but it works really well. So look at the final result. I mean, it took like 20 seconds, but this shot it's much much brighter than how it is in real life. Anyway, without further ado, here are some photo samples taken with the Mate 10 Pro against the Note 8 and the LG V30. So if you notice those two pictures you just saw of the Hong Kong skyline, the Mate 10 Pro um, picture looked a lot better than the Note 8. But you know, otherwise the, ca the three cameras are pretty even. I think LG's colors are a little bit muted, while the Note 8 is a little bit too punchy. The Mate 10 Pro might be a happy medium. Alright, enough of the comparisons. Let's just look at straight Huawei Mate 10 Pro samples. So that's it for another quick hands-on. I will have a full review later on, but um, the Mate 10 Pro is looking very, very impressive. This, this and the LG V30 are probably my two favorite phones right now. Uh, as you can see, you might be seeing I have iPhone X here. That's because um, tomorrow, I mean not tomorrow, next week, next Tuesday, I'm gonna get to test the iPhone X, so, or iPhone 10. So I might have a video for that. Um, stay tuned. Thanks for watching.